Salutations. <laughs> Don't be so formal. Bring it in. <laughs> Compared to all these other Saiyans and kids, I'm kind of an old-timer. But the fact is, and I don't want to say this too loud and embarrass people, but I'm one of the greatest martial artists here. Boy, if you don't... What's going on, YouTube? We're back at it again with M.J Designs and part two of the How to Draw an Illustrator tutorial. If you watched our first video, uh, you know exactly how we got here. You notice that we added Whis. You know, I got a little excited, so I went ahead and added another character, but the exact same tools and techniques we use on Beerus, you just use those same things on Whis to get his shape hammered out, or whatever character you want in your background, or you're working on. So to start adding shapes, this we're gonna use the pencil tool. There's a lot of different ways. This is one of the more simple ones, which is um, the reason I'm showing it to you. So I'm gonna get the pencil tool, which is a hotkey in. Before I do that, I'm gonna draw a sphere up here. This is pretty much our representation of a light source. So this is where the light's coming from, the top right hand corner. And everything we draw is gonna be assuming that that's the light source. So we're literally gonna come in, keep it loose, zoom in. And with this pencil tool, we're gonna start drawing the shadows exactly how they would fall if that light source was right there in the scene. Now visually this might take a while to get used to but you know you get the hang of it. Made a shape. I'm going to change that color to black. Then I'm going to go up here to our transparency. And I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply and I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 30 percent. Boom. We got our first shadow and we're already starting to get a little shape in this bad boy. Pretty much we're going to keep doing the exact same thing all the way around the character to knock out these shadows, at least the first layer of shadows. I'm going to fast forward through this part and I'll come back when we get a little more hammered out. Alright, so we got the basic shadow side done right now. I'm keeping it real loose right now. I'd normally be doing a lot more detail of being a little more perfectionist about it, but we'll keep it loose, keep it moving. So now you want to go in, uh, at least for me personally, my next step right now would be to go in and do another layer of shadows. A little bit darker shadows on the, on the, on the far back side of every contour. I'll show you what I mean by that, but follow along. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward again so we can knock this out and move on to the highlights. So, got that second layer of shadows down. Uh, we're moving pretty quick. Like I said, once you knock out those initial lines and you get your shape and your basic colors in, I mean, it's pretty off. To, you know, you're off to the races after that. Alright, we got some nice color laid down, you got your shadows, you got your highlights, looking pretty good, it's got some shape to them now. Now one of the last things I'll do, or sometimes it's actually the first thing I do before I have my shadows and highlights, is I'll go through and I'll add, I'll select my big, the, 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 the initial color we had at last video, the solid purple, the solid colors, 
I go to each one of those and I'll, I'll change it to a gradient. Of course, I'll plug in. Uh, let me get my colors right here. Windows, swatches, add used color. So any colors that I'm using in this composition have been added to my swatches. So I want to go through and select all my purple, change it to a gradient. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this gradient first so that the, the, the white is on the side of my, my light source. And this black, we're actually going to change it back to that purple we were using. And actually, we're probably going to change this to a purple too. Uh, We're just going to make this the left hand side away from the light source a darker purple than what we have obviously on the right hand side is close to the light source. Let's go back to this one, just brighten it up a little bit. By doing that, I don't know if you notice, but now we have a little bit more uh, shape on the character just from shifting those colors to having a gradient instead of a solid purple. We've got a light purple that fades into a, a slightly darker one. Let me fix this real quick light. There we go. What you can do sometimes, you know, is add a third color to that gradient. Let's make that a compound shape. With everything selected, click the gradient tool over here on the left and then click and drag and tell you exactly where you want your gradient to start and end. So I'm going to start at the back of the character and point it towards the light. There we go. Go back to the gradient tool, pull that lighter purple over a little bit. And I'm going to add like a, a bright yellow to simulate that light source. Boom, boom, boom. Pull it in, just you know, we don't want a whole lot, just a little bit. Yeah, let's play around with that the gradient one more time. There we go. See what that does? It adds you just simulates that light source you know I might end up going back in and taking that out you know who knows but it's just you know a nice little tool to have in the, in the arsenal well there you have it this concludes the illustrator side of this particular piece I would normally stop right here and move the whole project over to Photoshop and that's where I do a lot of my finishing work special effects and that's where I get this thing print ready but if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Definitely like the video, subscribe, and check back every Friday for a new release. It might be a speed painting. It might be another tutorial. Who knows what it might be. But it's going to be good. Until next time, folks. Peace.